So about a month and a half ago, I announced that my next long-term review was going to be Elementary OS. Now, a lot of people questioned, like, why would you want to do Elementary OS? What was the point of it? And my point behind trying Elementary OS wasn't because I really wanted to use it, but more that I wanted to see what it was all about. Why was it still a distro? Why is it still a distro? Why are they even bothering anymore? I wanted to know because there is such a long period of time between releases, even though it's not as bad as I thought it was. I thought that there was years between, but there's been a release basically every year. It's just sometimes it's more like 18 months. But still, there's still a long period between big releases. And given that there was a release that had just come out at the time I announced, I figured it was time to give it a look and see what is this thing all about? Is it any better than it used to be? Because it used to be downright bad. So I thought, let's do a long-term review. You know, I'll, I'll use it for a couple months and we'll see how it goes. Well, I am making this video today to officially announce that I'm giving up. I have been trying to use this thing for a month and a half, maybe two months now. And it has been a shit show from the beginning and on multiple pieces of hardware. Now, I want to be fair about this. I don't know whether or not this is an Ubuntu problem or if it's an elementary OS problem. I'm leaning towards it being an elementary OS problem given that I run Ubuntu on some of this hardware and it works fine. So I'm leaning towards that. But So I've had some problems. I've had multiple different issues. On this laptop here, I've installed elementary OS three times. The first time the hardware failed and we can't blame elementary OS for that. The second time, I could not for the life of me to get Wi-Fi to work. Wi-Fi just would not work whatsoever. Now, again, not sure if that was a hardware problem, but the hardware, the Wi-Fi works fine on what's on there now, which is NixOS. It works fine. The third time I tried, the screen was completely blank upon reboot after install installation. It just was completely black. And normally when that happens, that's usually, especially if it gets past Grub, usually that indicates that the display manager is corrupt or not launching or something. I could not for the life of me get to a TTY or anything though, so I couldn't fix it. So that was on this laptop. On my main computer, I have a secondary hard drive, and I wasn't going to use that this time because I had Windows on it, and I figured I'd just keep that Windows for a while in case I actually needed it. But I figured since I couldn't get it to work on this hardware, I'd try a different set of hardware. Well, the one time I tried to install it on this main PC, it just wouldn't install. It would not create a bootable system at all. It just failed during installation. Now, I thought maybe... I had some, like when I was doing this, I thought maybe I had a faulty ISO. That happens every once in a while. So I redownloaded the ISO and that didn't work on that one or this one. And I've tried four times over a month and a half. Now these, this was over a period of time because I got frustrated and, and left it alone for a little while. And I am just not interested in doing this anymore. So the little bit of time I used Elmatros on this laptop before the hardware failed. I will just tell you that I wasn't impressed. I, I can't tell you more than that because I didn't use it for but like a week and a half or so, but I wasn't impressed. I had problems where they tell you that FlatHub is enabled by default now. That's the whole big thing in elementary OS 8, but it's actually not. You have to visit the store, click on a link, and then FlatHub is enabled. Why it's not enabled out of the box, I don't know. It's really weird. And for those of you seeing what well, was enabled for me, I have screenshots which I'll put up here to show you that Elementary OS told me that FlatHub was not enabled by default and I had to click a link. So I don't know if other people just bypassed that and didn't see it or maybe it's just different for me. I don't know. So that really pissed me off because th that was the whole thing that was supposed to be new other than the Wayland session. And it wasn't there for me. Sure, it's just a link to click, but still... It was stupid. So that that was not a good experience. The Wayland session was actually fairly stable. I was actually quite surprised by that, given that this is their first attempt at Wayland. So the little bit of time I actually used it, I will say that I didn't have too much problems in terms of Wayland. Now, this computer is all AMD, so I wasn't really expecting too much problems. At least I wasn't expecting the problems I would have had if I had an NVIDIA card. So it worked fine. But like I said, I can't really tell you if that experience would have held up over the course of any period of time because I was only able to use it for a little while and then I had to go into a series of reinstalls with different hardware problems, different problems with the OS, a different computer, all of that nonsense. So I will just say this. 
I'm giving up. I'm not going to do a long-term review, so I can't tell, like, I'm, I'm just going to stop and stop trying. I'm going to move on to something different. I don't know what that's going to be yet, but we'll figure that out. I will say, though, that I really feel like this should not be a distro. Like, I, I really feel like it shouldn't be a distro. It feels like it should just be a, a desktop environment that gets shared across different things, or it should be an Ubuntu flavor of some kind. If this was just a Ubuntu flavor, it'd be actually pretty good, I think. I, I don't think that there'd be any problem with that. It would just rely on Ubuntu for doing the distro-related stuff, and then they could focus on being a really good desktop environment, which is what Pantheon is. Pantheon is a good desktop environment. They changed the light theme, so it's not that weird chrome skeuomorphic stuff that they used to have. It's more of a white theme now. It's actually fairly pleasing. The dark theme has always been superior to almost all of the other dark themes on a desktop environment. It's very, very good. So that is, they have the design down. They need to fix the flat hub thing so it's enabled by default without having to click a link. And they need to just stop worrying about the distro stuff. Just be a desktop environment, become an Ubuntu flavor or whatever. And I think that that'd be a much better way to go than what they are right now. But that, those are just all based on my very initial impressions from like a month ago. And I've had so many problems. I don't know who to blame. I don't know if there should be blame at all. Maybe I'm just having hardware problems across the board. It's always possible. So I'm just done with it. And I wanted to make a video to let you guys know that there's not going to be an elementary OS review. I'm sorry about that. I, I do apologize. Sometimes stuff just goes wrong. And we'll move on to something else. So if you have an idea over what I can do a long-term review of next, you can leave those in the comment section below. I'd love to hear from you. I'm not guarantee I'm going to take anyone's suggestion, but I might see a distro down there. They go, oh, yeah, that may be a good thing to, to long-term review. Someone's going to suggest void. I know it's promised to do a void long-term review. Maybe that's going to happen. I don't know. I'm, I'm not that interested in it. We'll see. Anyways, you can follow me on Mastodon. That link will be in the video description. You can also support me on Patreon at patreon.com slash the Linuxcast. There you'll find uh, a weekly exclusive podcast that I release for all of my patrons. So if you want to hear me blabber about more Linuxy stuff, you can head on over there. Give me some support and get that in return. I also release my blog posts early and occasionally a video early. I also talk about what I'm going to publish on the channel every week so you can kind of get a sense of what's coming up if you want to so that's patreon.com slash linuxcast thanks to everybody who does support me on patreon and youtube you guys are all absolutely amazing without you the channel just would not be anywhere near where it is right now so thank you so very much for your support i truly do appreciate it you can also visit the store if you want to shop at the linuxcast.org there you'll find awesome merchandise and all the proceeds for that go directly towards helping me make more linux content for you guys so thank you so very much for your support thanks everybody for watching i'll see you next time.